Midday Mastery, and today is Midday Mastery, episode number 18. I'm going to be talking to you about upsells and one-time offers. So, yesterday in a video that I did, we spoke about landing pages, we've talked about sales funnels, we've talked about opt-ins. All throughout this week, we've been talking about the customer journey and how you get them to know, like, and trust you. And so today, I want to talk about the steps that you can take after people have purchased from you. And I've got my timer going today, it's working, it's here. I've even had a shave. I'm starting to, to get more respectable and I'm starting to, uh, to make sure that I show up for you guys. But the one thing that you probably weren't expecting is that I am wearing, that's right, fucking Rudolph. And there's a reason for this. I want to talk to you about Christmas. Now, my poor, and I say poor, I mean, she's kind of blessed because she gets the privilege, but also I feel really sorry for her because she um, has the unfortunate or the misfortune of living with me. Uh, my housemate, the person who I'm living with at the moment, has to endure me singing Christmas songs, even when it's just got nothing to do with Christmas. Zainab, hey, Emma, how you doing? So I, 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 I sing Christmas songs all year round. I'm always whistling Rudolph. Uh, I did it recently with Lily in the car. I mean, I'm, I'm always, I don't know why, I just, I don't even like Christmas. It's a really challenging time of year for me, yet I'm always singing Christmas songs. And it got me thinking about upsells. And there's relevance here, trust me. I've actually planned today out. I'm like, there's a whole, like I even wrote on the board before we started. Um, there's a whole thing around upsells. And I'm going to tell you a couple of little things, really, a couple of examples, and then I'm going to relate that into how you can use it. So the first one is that, let's just look at the really common example that everyone knows about. Uh, Natalie, hey, how you doing? Emma, hi everyone, by the way, nice to see you on here. Um, the, the really common way for people to upsell is McDonald's, right? We all know about McDonald's. So we all know about the idea of you go into McDonald's and you buy a burger. And the first thing that they turn around to you and say is, would you like, uh, a meal? Would you like to make that a meal? The reason they do that is because McDonald's don't really make any money on their burger. They make money on the fries and the Coke. And then so by offering you the ability to upsell you a meal, they're making more profit. The thing to think about as well as that is that if they ask you to go large, an extra 30p, if, they, if, they, if they ask that every single time, that extra 30p, in terms of what it costs to put a few extra chips into a box, and in terms of what it costs, the manufacturing cost, to put a little bit more drink into a cup, maybe a few more ice cubes because we know what they're like, the ability to do that, it costs a fraction of the profit that they make. So whereas, and I'm going to give you an example here. Now, I don't know the exact maths, so I'm just going to use this really, really simply to give an example. If you have a product that costs you one pound to produce, let's just say that's the cost of the product to, to produce that. So manufacturing cost is one pound, and you sell it for two. Okay? So you buy, or it costs you one pound, and you sell it for two pounds. So you are making a 100% markup. Does that make sense so far? I'm going to do it really simple, all right? I'm sorry, I don't want to teach anyone to suck eggs. But I just want to go to the basic concept of this. Now, let's imagine somebody wants to buy this, and they're going to, they're going to buy this and give you a pound. You've just made 100% profit. Now, let's imagine you have an upsell where you can, and it only costs you an extra 10p, right? So let's say for one pound 10p, you can have an upsell, and you can sell that off for an additional, let's just say, you make it three pound. Okay, I want to try and keep the numbers really easy so it makes sense. So, in fact, what you could end up doing here is making 200%. Let me make sure I've got my mash right. But it's only actually cost you an extra 10p. So where you're actually before, you was only making a one pound profit here, but here you're actually making a one pound 90 profit. You're making an additional 90p simply by asking for an upsell. Does that make sense? Like I want to keep. I don't want to overcomplicate this. I want to keep this really, really simple. And the whole idea behind this is your manufacturing costs. Like, and let's take McDonald's as an example. What it actually cost them to produce the container that the drink goes in. What it actually cost them to produce the packaging that the fries go in. Uh, what it actually cost them to create the burger. Now you're paying for the burger. All right, and let's just imagine that that's the one pound cost. I mean, God, like, does anyone remember what a burger cost one? Even a 99p menu now costs two pound in McDonald's. It's crazy. But if you imagine, if you if you imagine back to a burger costing a pound, all right, so they'll they'll charge you, let's just say, a pound for the whole meal. Now, if you go large on this, it's only going to cost them 
let's just say an extra 10p to make that bigger, but they're going to charge you £2 for it. So can you see what I mean by the idea is that it doesn't cost you as much to manufacture the extra, but if you ask for it, the chances are people will pay. Now, let me explain how you can relate that into your business, whatever it is you're doing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense what I'm saying? Because I, I don't want to overcomplicate this, and there's loads of things you can do that will teach you about stuff like this. I'm not really sort of trying to go into the maths too much here. Um, that's not the, the point of this. The idea is I'm trying to get you to realise how important it is to ask for an upsell. That's the whole purpose of this. So that's McDonald's. We've used that as an example. Now consider the reason I'm actually wearing this Christmas jumper. How many times have you gone out to a restaurant? And it doesn't even have to be a restaurant. I'm going to use restaurants as an example. How many times have you gone into a shop in, I don't know, July, and they've got the Christmas wrapping paper out? See, see what I mean? Do you see where I'm starting to go with this? If you go into a restaurant, specifically where I used to live in the area that I used to live in in Essex, I could go into a restaurant in August, and they will be taking Christmas bookings in August. So you will go into a restaurant with the idea that you're going to have a meal and they will then upsell you the opportunity to book in advance for Christmas. So it's always about what can you offer. So we talked about having, you know, I'm going to go back to talk about we've got the opt-in, all right, and then from the opt-in, in, that was Monday we talked about that. Uh, Tuesday we went through and we talked about the IPO, all right. Yesterday we talked about the core offer and obviously today we're talking about upsells. So the idea behind this is that as you're going through the process, if you're going to a restaurant and the core offer is dinner, because that's what they're offering you, even I understand, so yes it does, Emma, that's amazing, thank you so much, I love that you're on it, I appreciate it. If, um, if you consider a core offer is to go to a restaurant and have a meal, the upsell will be booking you in advance into Christmas. So what, the idea is what's next, what's next? What's next? I started at the beginning of the week by mentioning this, that the most important thing you can say is, what's next? What are we going to do next? What's, the, what's the, the purpose of this journey? So let's take this away from the analogies and the Christmas jumpers, and let's look at more practical things, like within your business, for example. Because um, one of the things that I want to do is I want to talk to you about OTI, which is one-time offers, and how you can use this as an upsell, like the purpose of this and how it relates. So one last thing I'm just going to mention quickly, I've written it down, is Ryanair. Anyone flown on Ryanair before? Or EasyJet? Or Hertz Rent-A-Flight or whatever they're called? Any of those cheap budget airlines? Anyone ever been on a cheap budget airline where you book your ticket and then you have to pay extra for your seat and then extra for wings? And if you want an engine, that costs a little bit more too. And so they start you off on like, from 4p. Like you can get a flight. I, I used to book flights. From, when I was in the army and I was in Germany, we used to book flights from Dusseldorf to London for a penny penny for a flight it was like yeah we'll book it how much business can you attract when it's like a penny flight but then you'd have to pay 10 pound for tax and you'd have to pay extra for this and that and the other and so they upsell and upsell and upsell so they get you in they get you to opt in they get the initial purchase which is a penny and then they upsell you on everything else that you need to go with it Kevin says, I don't uh, have a business, but I'm listening in. Well, look, if you're thinking about it in the future, this is just, some of it's good knowledge. I mean, the idea behind this is that if I can get you to start thinking about things in a way, then if at the time in the future that you do want a business, then hopefully you'll go, what was he waffling about? There was something there about sales funnels. Oh, yeah, I remember. You can go on YouTube and all the videos are up there. You can go and look at it anytime you want. Um, the whole idea is just to create this archive that you've got this information that you're aware of it. That's all. And so, I talk about upsells and the importance of upsells. So, one-time offers, what is that, what does it mean, and why is it important? So, the thing with upsells is, if somebody has their credit card out, hypothetically, maybe it's cash, whatever, if they've got their wallet out or their purse, or if somebody's ready to purchase, they are more likely, in that moment, to add something else to the order. If you've got kids and you've been shopping, you know exactly what I mean, it's why they put the sweets by the counter. Daddy, can I just have a chocolate bar? Sure. You know, it's like that begrudging, okay then. Like, that people know what they're doing. That People pay so much money in shops to have the shop laid out in a specific way. And if you've ever been to Disney, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. That customer experience of going past every single toy just to get to the checkout. 
They do it on purpose. Because they know that your child will be like, I want that one and that one and that one and that one. And you end up with a basket. You didn't even have a basket when you started. And now all of a sudden you've got the entire shop. Because they know what they're doing. It's a process. It's taking you through a process. And when you get to the checkout, they've always got the little things. If you notice, they don't put the plasma TV at the checkout, do they? Because that's a bit of a big decision that you need to make. It's not even plasma anymore. What am I talking about? It's more like OLED TV, you know? Maybe they do put the plasma ones there to get rid of them. But the idea is that the things that they put at a checkout are the small little things. Like, oh, some chewing gum. Oh, there's some sweets. Oh, look, there's a little thing that I can buy here or some, an add-on or a little, another thing. Oh, I, I didn't think I needed that. But, oh, do you know what? I'm going to get it anyway. It's the upsell. It's the little things that you do in, 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 the, uh, in the journey. What are you offering as your core product? And what do you think people need to go with that? Now, for most people in business at the moment, if you have a service, the best way you can upsell is your core offer, if it is your time, let's say your core offer, you're, you're, you're selling a service and it takes, I don't know, let's just say it takes you one week to deliver, yeah? I'm gonna give you a great example. I'm gonna use uh, photographers as an example. It's just, it's just an example. You do a photography package and as part of the photography package, you say your photos will be ready in a week. However, if you want to pay an extra 50 pounds, I can have them ready for you in 72 hours. I think Amazon do this really well with Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, when you consider the upsell, you know, you can pay for extra package or if you, uh, if you pay for extra, uh, if you want it delivered quicker, then they upsell you the ability to deliver it um, in, in a quicker way. So that's just an example of an upsell that you can use there. Uh, Polish builders may be. But my point is that if you're considering um, an upsell, it should really, it, like, the most important thing is to make sure that it relates to whatever it is you're selling. Like, it's been proven that if you, if you upsell something that has absolutely no relevance, for example, if you go to McDonald's and you order a Happy Meal and they are, offer you a socket set as an upsell, some people might buy it, but the chances are, whatever you, like, People are going to be like, no, I don't want that. And in fact, it's been proven that if your upsell is not relevant, if it's not relevant, the chances are people may abandon the core offer because there's an incongruency. So if this is not relevant to your core offer, people might at that point go, hold on a minute, like, I'm buying this and you're offering me something that's got absolutely nothing to do with it at all. In some people's minds, that, asks, that throws a question, why? Why are they doing that? And then they start to question the whole checkout process. Well, hold on a minute. That doesn't make sense. So maybe this doesn't. Hold on, do I actually need this? Hold on a minute. Maybe I can get it somewhere else. So the whole idea here is you can actually harm your conversions if you're upselling something that has absolutely nothing to do with what it is they're purchasing. So you need to make sure that part of the upsell process is it uh, complements the core offer. It complements. So whatever it is goes with it. Does that make sense? The idea behind this is that if you are going to sell something, whatever you upsell goes with it. Now, the reason I talked about OTOs and one-time offers, it's possible that somebody who is ready to purchase from you and has put in their card details and is ready to go would then like an upsell. And you can do this in two ways. You can upsell them before they check out. So if they're on the checkout page and they're ready to buy from you and you've gone through all the details, there could be a little box here that says, but wait, would you like to add this to the order? And they click a little button and it just simply adds it to the order. That's like a nice, easy way to do it. However, another way to do it is they can actually check out, purchase, and then after they've purchased, on the next screen, you have what's called a one-time offer. And so it's like, hey, thanks for purchasing, because you want to secure in his payment, right? You want to make sure that they've already taken, you've taken a payment, you've got it. So the whole idea of a one-time offer is you say now, before you go, maybe it's a quick video or something, let me just offer you this. Now, this is a one-time offer. Now, what that means is that I'm only offering it now. The only way that you can get to this page is after you've purchased. So you must purchase to get to this page. If you haven't purchased, you can't get to this page. You can't directly come to this page. Although some people, because it's not set up right, you can. And that can cause questions with inauthenticity, um, and, and you know, so there's, there's an, an ethical thing that if you do this, you need to do it genuinely. It needs to be like it literally is a one time offer. And the whole idea is that people, it's using scarcity. 
people think, oh, I don't want to miss this. It's a really good deal. A good example is an event company. So you may purchase your seat. And let's say, for example, you purchase a bronze seat. So um, this is the stage that you're going to be talking at. This is the seating. And they may turn around and say, hey, look, you've just purchased this seat right next to the fire exit back down here. This would be the purchase. So you've now successfully purchased it. And they say, hold on, before you go, turns out we've actually got a seat just here. We can do this. We've only got one, so this is a one-time offer. But if you'd like, we can actually upgrade you to this seat. So whereas you paid £20 for this seat, and this one is normally £60, we'll do it as a one-time offer, 50% off. So for an extra £20, you can have this seat. So this will actually cost you 40 not 60 One-time offer. Does that make sense? So that's the, that's the thing I'm trying to sort of put out here, is that the reason that a one-time offer is successful is because it's scarcity. Whilst you're in that moment, it's like, if I don't take this now, I can't have it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a strategy. That's not unethical at all. Like, you could literally say to somebody, look, here is a one-time offer. Thank you for purchasing. I really appreciate it. Now, here's the thing, and this is what you must make sure you do. This is very, very important. If somebody purchases something from you, the next thing that you should do, the next thing, the very next thing, is deliver what you've promised. If you purchase something and then all of a sudden you've purchased it and you're being taken somewhere completely different like how annoyed would you be if you booked a flight from london to san diego and then you got on a plane and they said oh hold on a minute we're going to make a, a stop in australia like if they took you on a detour completely out your way or maybe it's not even out your way maybe it's on the way maybe it's like hold on we're going to stop at iceland but you didn't know about it how would you feel and so if they took you through loopholes or if they took you through these things hoops that you had to jump through chances are you might have a bit of a bad experience and what we're trying to do here is make this a a pleasant enjoyable experience so people get what they want so if someone purchases from you you must make sure that the very very next thing you do is give them the ability or the opportunity to get what they purchased and you can at the same time offer them the ability or the opportunity I do not like, and look, this is take it or leave it, I'm only giving you my advice. I do not like these people that take you from a checkout page and then take you straight to a new landing page for a new offer. And I've seen people do it, I know people that do it, I don't agree with it. Of course it works and they get that. And if you're focused around just making money, great, do it, it's up to you. I don't condone it, but what I'm saying is that there is nothing wrong with, if we're going to look at a landing page as an example, let me just draw a quick landing page. Uh, Stephanie, I love this by the way, this is amazing. Um, if you take a landing page, for example, and I'm just going to draw it in green. Let's just say you've purchased, okay? You come to this page. What I recommend is that the top section, maybe the first 20 to 30% of the page, is their order. And then you can go into an upsell. And then you can talk about, oh, hold on, before you go. But you're letting them know, hold on, here's this, and then here's this. So it's like, what's next? Now... I agree that you will have lower conversions by doing that. It's true. However, you will ethically um, be doing the right thing in terms of giving people what they bought and then offering it to them. So you need to test it. You need to figure out what works. There's two ways to do it. But I would always make sure that when someone's purchased something, you deliver on what they've ordered and you give them that and then give them the ability to carry on and to continue that. But you want to catch them in that moment. It's very important. Because yes, some people will click straight through to what they purchased, but a few will answer. They will look at this and say, do you know what? I'm interested. I want this upsell, especially if it's really good. So that depends on the design and the way out. So there's two ways to do it. You can do it on the checkout page before they purchase, but be aware that it has to be relevant. And if they're not interested, and make it easy. Don't make it overpowering. Make it really small and simple so they can just go, oh, click. And they can just upsell and they can add that on. Or otherwise, what I would say is get them to go to a one-time offer page, add the scarcity in, um, but obviously make sure that you deliver first. That's my advice for today. That's all about upsells and one-time offers. Uh, it really does help to know what your upsells cost in terms of any production value or anything you need to invest into that. Um, and then also make sure that whatever that is, like if you're in the service industry, the best upsell you can offer is less time. All right, if you're in the product industry, then it can be a complementing product, something that goes with it. Like, okay, so you've just bought a wardrobe. Would you like us to assemble it for you? 
you know, like whatever it may be, like the upsell, like the additional thing, what benefits this and goes with it to make your experience even better? Something that they might not have considered, but they look at it and go, oh, actually, do you know what? I need that, or I'm interested in that, or that makes sense. You get that? Makes sense? So, here's a one-time offer for you today. I'm talking in London. I'm going to be talking at an event in London at the weekend on Saturday, and here is a one-time offer if you would like to come with me. I'm going to take one person as a guest. So if you want to come with me and don't want to pay for the ticket and want to come and see me, then comment underneath and say, yes, please, if you're in London this Saturday and you want to come with me. One time offer, one person only. See the scarcity, see what I'm doing here, see how I'm, I'm getting you involved in all different ways. So just comment below, say, yes, please. And if you're in London and you're available all day Saturday, it's going to be a full day, like nine till five. I'm not talking all day, by the way. I'm going to be talking around lunchtime, just so you know. Um, but there's going to be three amazing speakers there. A uh, great friend of mine, Kai, is running this event. Um, it's his first event, so I'm excited to support him in this. And so I will make sure I post a link to the event below uh, so you can find out about it. But if you would like to come as my guest, then please uh, comment below and I'll make sure that you get a ticket. Hopefully that's been valuable. You've enjoyed it. Today's helped you in some way. If you find that there is somebody out there asking about this sort of stuff, please tag them below so they can see it. Really appreciate that. Um, Again, anything else that you can do to support me uh, right now would just be likes, shares, comments, anything like that. Uh, always grateful for that. Share the message and I will speak to you tomorrow. Now, we've pretty much gone through everything we need to go through. So tomorrow, I'm going to do a recap. I'm going to recap the sales funnel. We're going to go through the whole process again that I've already done. And if you remember back to day one when I did the initial video, I'm basically just going to repeat that tomorrow. We're going to go through it. Any questions, anything you've got, put it in the comments below. Send me a PM if you've got any questions. Put it below. In fact, no, don't send me a PM because it's much better when you do it and everyone can benefit from it. The whole reason I do this is so that everyone can benefit. So if you've got any questions, post it below and we'll address it tomorrow. Apart from that, have an amazing day. I will speak to you tomorrow. Take care. And let me know if you've got an upsell at the moment. Put it in the comments below. Let me know what it is. I want to know what your upsell process is. So what are you doing at the moment as a core offer? What are you doing as an upsell? Have a great day and I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.